So I have been working on Agent Smith uh, over the past year, slowly, um, but I've recently been focusing back on Night versus Night, and a uh, piece of hardware that I got, this nice little KVM, um, that's a little bit different than most KVMs, but, um, and then I got a little keyboard here where with this one little button press, it is wired into the keyboard input of this KVM. So it, the KVM just sees this as a keyboard. And when I press it, it's a hotkey sequence that this KVM understands to switch these two. And what makes this KVM a little nice and different is watch how fast when I push, push this button, three, two, one, watch how fast those things swapped. And now the keyboards are going to light up white and red to match the, uh, the evil or uh, good characters. And then um, it's much faster when I press this thing nowadays, very fast swap. There's no more of that time delay on the screens. Now the keyboards do take a, still about the same amount of time, but the software is much improved. And I can do it uh, as pretty much as fast as I want. Uh, not really as fast as I want. I can't just go bang, 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 bang on it. But I can go pretty fast. Now the only gating factor here is when I press this, um, it actually does tell the KVM to swap, but then the software sees that the primary keyboard that's in here, there's a primary keyboard and a secondary keyboard. When this is the primary screen and this is the secondary screen. And so when the, uh, when we're on primary, we know what that keyboard is, but when I press this white button, it tells the KVM to swap these two ports right here. And then that will result in that keyboard disappearing. And when the software sees that that keyboard, dis the primary keyboard disappears, it will then trigger the secondary switch to switch the remote. So the secondary switch is this one here. So then the software is going to trigger this guy to flip itself. So this button presses this, the software detects the absence of this, and then it tells this to swap itself, which brings this keyboard now over to the second computer, which will match up with the screen. So the screen swap is nearly instantaneous. And then all the software goes and figures out, that software is gonna figure out to swap. It's telling this guy to swap and it's swapping these two keyboards and this will turn red to match that and this will turn white to show that that's good. So um, that's, uh, Night versus night specific uh, implementation of what is improved and it'll be fast. Um, it, it's improving the code of what I will do next for Agent Smith, which are these guys. I have a, a black version here and I have a white version, but I've taken it apart as I'm reverse engineering um, the the this chip on here, that tiny little chip. Uh, it's the same chip that is on this. So the same chip that powers that is actually the same chip that's on this. So I know the chip now, I just need to know how to program it. And then this is gonna be a keyboard where I have a white version and a black version of it. And the white version would sit over here somewhere in this mess and the black version would sit over here. And the black version represents this actual computer and the white version represents this actual computer. And so from the black computer, I could press the black computer and it would stay on the, on the yeah, yeah, my Alexa doesn't like me when I say that. From the uh, right computer, the black, thank you, I need to not say that word. Black is a color that results in the absence Stop. of complete absorption of visible light. It is an um, color computer. Without... Stop. So when I press the red button, it will, uh, th this black C word will be on that side. And if I press the white button, then the right computer will become 
the right C word will, the black C word will become the white C word. And similarly, when this thing's plugged back into the white C word, um, computer, stop. Uh, when, and I've got the hats on here, I've got a, a black and a white keycap on here. So the uh, white, the white C word, when I press this, it will make sure it'll force the white side. And then when I press this, it'll force the white computer, this side, to be the black C word. I gotta not say this, the C word. Um, so that's just another way of scaling the, the Agent Smith up. And then I've got the uh, Mega keyboard, which is this one. Um, which this then will scale up to five by five computers. I would have five computers and five screens. And I can take... Right now I only have one of these. Um, and it's a... F uh, s yeah, you could say fully programmable if you want. Um, but I can tell when I press this one, I'll be the first computer on the first screen. When I press this one, I'm the last computer on the la on the fifth computer on the fifth screen. I should probably mute my microphone on the uh, Alexa over there. And this would be the second, com the second C word on the second screen, the third C word on the third screen, the fourth C word. So the, the normal setups would be this diagonal but I could basically, from the first C word, I can show any of the other ones. So this would be the C word, and this would be which one of those I want to see on that C word. So if I'm sitting in any one of them, or if I'm not sitting in any of them, I can still switch over um, anyone else, like my daughter's, or the kiosk one, to any other uh, C word. And I can basically just pick and choose who I want where. And then that is kind of the full-scale Agent Smith. Um, it's a bit of a stretch to say the software would be directly usable by Agent Smith, um, but it's getting me to play with the chips that are on these, which scales up to this, and I'm still a bit away from uh, having something work, but I've vastly improved my um, selfish, personal uh, night versus night switching, which is very fast. Um, at least then I have a visual. Um, it doesn't like kind of, the old one was just quite slow, slow, of a, a slow of a swap. And this one is much faster. Uh, and then the only real gate, the slowed down is when that light is amber in the middle, it's not accepting any commands. Uh, and I'm not quite sure it'll just reject any commands that come into it to swap. But now, since it's not amber, I can swap it, and when it is switching, it'll go amber, and while it's amber, it won't accept any more commands until it's finished the swap, and then the amber light will turn off, and then it will accept. Then it will not ignore any commands, and then three, two, one. So that part's a little slow. I can't really, like, it's a gating factor on how fast I can go back to it. Um, so... The swap is pretty fast. The amber light doesn't really, it doesn't indicate of how fast the swap is. The amber light only indicates how fast I can go back. I can undo the swap. And uh, one day I may come up with a solution for that too. So I don't have that silly little firmware choice they have in there. Uh, it'd be interesting to find out what chip is inside that. Um, I have an extra one laying around here somewhere that I can actually right here. Um, I may crack this one open and see what chip is in this and uh, figure out how it works. So I am I am still tinkering. Um, I don't really have anything yet to sell <laughs> or to um, present other than to just like people I know, friends. All right, later. Thanks for watching, like, and subscribe.